Well, actually, this is not shabby at all. That's pretty surprisingly good. If you watched the previous video, you'll have seen me vibe coding a vibing button. Now, a few people suggested that we take it a step further. Why not vibe code the actual hardware? So, challenge accepted. Now, of course, speaking of PCBs, we should really mention PCBWay. I've got some PCBs on order with them right now. These are handcrafted, non-AI ones. So looking forward to a project with those. And thanks also to all the Patreons who support me. Now I have done some quick research and I've settled on using a tool called Atopile. There are other options, but this is the first one I tried and it seemed to give pretty reasonable results. I've also switched over to using Claude Code as this seemed to be doing a better job than Cursor for this task. So I've made a new Atopile project and here's the prompt we're going to use. So we want an ESP32 S3 dev board. Obviously we'll need an S3 module. USB, a 3.3 volt regulator, a few LEDs, a quick connector, and a reset and a boot button. I'm going to need some passive components for any of the above things. I've given it some hints on what it should do, so an RC circuit. And I've also told it USB-C, we want 5 volts and we want the data lines. And I've put in a bit of extra information, so GPIO 19 and GPIO 20 on the ESP32 S3 modules, they're the D- minus and D plus pins. So make sure we label those correctly so we get differential routing. We also want to use LCSC part numbers for the components. And I've told it to go off and search the web for these. And I want to use 0603 for all the resistors and capacitors. I've given it how to actually create a part using Atopile. And I've said, try and do it one thing at a time and run the build command every so often. I've also said, be very careful, use the right pin names and numbers. So let's copy and paste this into Claude. So if we go on to the terminal, I'll launch Claude. Okay, so he's up and running. And then we'll just paste in our prompt and we'll see what Claude makes of it. So off you go, Mr. AI. Build me an ESP32 dev board. So it's off doing its work. It's uh, got various displays as it's thinking. So it's currently cooking. It's made a to-do list, so it's going to go off and search for various components. Um, it's going to find some LEDs, it can add the boot buttons. So it's starting off looking at the current project and seeing what's required. So off it goes. So it's already doing a web search. So it's gone off to try and find a, a Room 1 module from LCSC. Okay, so it's chosen an N16 R8. So that's pretty cool. So it's running our little command. Do we want to proceed? Yes. Okay, now it's hustling and it's searching for a USB-C connector. So I think we'll let it get on with what it's doing and we'll come back when it's finished. I'm just going to keep hitting yes to everything it asks. I'm going to not look at the code. That's the tradition of vibe coding. We don't look at the code ever. We just let it do what it wants to do. And we may have to give it a few hints, but let's see how it gets on. So we'll leave this running and see what happens. And this looks like our last component. So some tactile switch buttons and some capacitors for decoupling, and a few resistors. So hopefully we're almost done with the components and it will start wiring them up. Okay, so it thinks it's got all the components. It's gonna update its to-do list and start adding them to the main.atto file. Okay, so we'll let it make all the edits it wants. Now I'm gonna be intrigued as to whether this works first time. I'll be quite surprised if it does. I suspect it's gonna run this build command and we're gonna get quite a few errors, but let's see. Okay, there we go. Got some errors. Let's see if it can work out how to fix them. Okay, so I see the issue. Import statements are incorrect. So it's gonna go off and do a bit of work and try and fix itself. Build has succeeded. It's gonna go and do its to-do list. And now it's gonna add the connections between the components. Okay. Project build successfully. Includes all the requested features. Got our module, USB-C connector, 3.3 volt regulator, status LEDs, quick connector, reset and boot buttons, all the necessary passive components, and the RC components for the enable pin. So all the components use LCSC part numbers and are available for ordering. It's ready for layout and PCB manufacturing. Well, let's double check that. So I'm gonna run a manual build just to make sure it does actually build. Not that I don't trust the AI, but let's just double check. Build successful, I'm quite impressed. So if we hit this button, we should launch KiCad and go into the PCB designer. So here we are inside KiCad, here's all our components. Let's, um, let's build an actual board and see if they're actually connected up. So we'll just do some edge cuts, do a little small board, 
and then we'll just go place auto place footprints and we'll place all the board footprints so let's have a look so what I can see if we move some of these around we have absolutely no connections so it's got all the components I think they're all there it looks like they're all there let's go back to um, Claude and uh, get it to actually do the connections we just have to tell it it's forgotten to actually wire anything up so we're back in Claude so I don't see any connections let's be explicit between the components all right then come on AI I have faith you can do this you're absolutely right I've only added the components but I didn't create any connections what a doofus. Come on, wire it up. Okay, the build actually succeeds and it claims to have wired everything up. So uh, once again, I'm going to run my own build just to double check. Well, it's not lying. The build does work. So it says I've done all of this stuff. So what's it say it's done? Power supply, it's wired up the AMS 3117. Um, input filtering, output filtering. Um, it's got the USB-C connector with 5.1k CC resistors. It's got the USB D plus and D minus lines connected to the GPIO 19 and 20, properly labeled for differential routing. It's got a red LED for 5 volts, green for 3.3, and a blue LED to GPIO 48. Reset button and a boot button, quick connector with IO21 and IO47. An RC circuit on the enable pin, so that's good. This looks like quite a low resistor value. Um, it might work, but I'd normally use something a bit higher. Um, it's got all the ground connections, proper power decoupling, blah, blah, blah. Well, let's have a look in KeyCAD. Well, I'm pretty impressed. It has done a lot of wiring. So what I'm gonna do is lay this out so we can actually view it a bit better. And then we'll uh, do a review and see how good this actually is. Okay, so I've laid out everything in approximately the right places. We have a whole bunch of decoupling capacitors here. Um, there's a decoupling capacitor here. But what I can immediately see is our EN circuit. We're missing the capacitor for our RC. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop back to Claude and tell him he's forgotten about it. Okay, we seem to be missing the capacitor on the RC circuit for the EN pin. We have the resistor, but no capacitor. Okay, you're absolutely right. I added the resistor for the IC circuit, but forgot the capacitor. Let me fix this. Okay, yes, go off and fix this. Okay, it's built. Let's um, click this button and see if it's actually been added. Okay, result. We have a new capacitor. Let's bring it in. And there we go. There is our capacitor. So I'm going to finish wiring this up and then we'll have a look at it and see how well it um, came out. But so far, looks pretty reasonable. Okay, so that's the layout done. I've done some ground fills to make sure the grounds are connected. Let's just turn that off. It's a very, um, I've done a quick and dirty routing. It's not ideal, it's not perfect, but all the components are there. The only thing I had to change is this resistor on the RC circuit for the EN. It had used a 330 ohm resistor and I had to tell it to go and use a 10K, but it was quite happy to go and fix that for us. So we now have our RC circuit on the EN pin. We've got our little reset button here, got the boot button here. Um, let's just move some of these references around. It does, um, yeah, it does put them in strange places and for some reason duplicates them, which is a bit odd. But let's just move those there and that there. So yeah, we've actually got what could probably work. So let's look at the 3D view. I mean, that's, that's not bad, is it? We have a nice PCB here. Here's our nice little LEDs for indicating stuff. We have our quick connector for connecting peripherals, our two switches, USB-C socket for connecting up power and data. We've got our RC circuit for the EN pin. We've got a, a lot of decoupling capacitors. Can't have too many of them. Um, the big capacitor industry would be happy with the AI doing that. It's only one input filtering capacitor, which is interesting, but maybe that would work. Uh, we are using one of these AMS uh, 117 regulators. Oops, I'd probably choose something else. Um, we could probably ask it for something more modern, but it has actually produced something that is not an unreasonable starting point. The only slight downside is that you don't really get a schematic. So I think the latest version of Atapile will actually start producing schematics, so that would be really useful. Uh, I think the current version is only compatible with KiCad 5. 
um, if you want schematics. But um, I think this tool, coupled with a, a nice schematic output, could actually be quite useful. I think we're not far away from being able to vibe code our own PCBs. So not bad. I'm starting to enjoy this, uh, this brave new AI world.